Okay, so today we're going to look at Anne Fausto Sterling's text, Should There Be Only Two Sexes? Fausto Sterling's thesis, her overall claim, the thing that she's trying to argue for, is that the medical management of intersex births needs to stop. It is harmful. She's arguing that it's harmful to operate on intersexed infants, infants who have genitalia of what is commonly understood to be both male and female sexes. Along with her thesis, she makes three supporting claims. One is that there should be no unnecessary surgeries. And by unnecessary, she means surgeries that are not done to save an infant's life or to enhance their physical well-being. Unfortunately, these kinds of surgeries have been done regularly in the past, and they still continue today. The second claim supporting the overall thesis is that physicians should only assign a provisional sex. They should not attempt to change the sex of the infant. So, number one, it shouldn't be done unless it's absolutely necessary, and by absolutely necessary, that means to save uh, an infant's life or to enhance their physical well-being. And number two, physicians should not perform these surgeries to assign a permanent biological sex to an infant who is intersexed. Third, information and counseling should be provided for parents and children. This is a huge problem. It has been in the past and it continues to be today that there's not enough information given to patients, intersex children, their parents, parents of intersex infants and children, to, to understand their own bodies and the possibilities for a healthy future psychologically, physically, and emotionally. One in every 1,500 to 2,000 births are intersexed. And one in every 100 births is born with ambiguous genitalia. Fausto Sterling's main point here is that she wants infant genital surgery to stop because it is genital mutilation. <clears throat> and we judge other societies for practicing genital mutilation while we perform it in order to maintain the two sex system, the binary sex system, male and female. Further, as Fausto Sterling shows, the medical cure for intersexuality does more harm than good. It's a cosmetic surgery. It's done merely on the basis of the appearance of the genitals, not their functioning. So it's performed to achieve a social result. Infant genital surgery is not performed to achieve physical well-being or to achieve a functional result. It's merely done to achieve a social result and it's based on the appearance of the genitals. So transforming an ambiguous body to conform to a two-sex system is problematic. It doesn't work. It causes a great deal of scarring. It often requires multiple surgeries. It causes psychological harm and trauma, which often involves abuse and hinders patients from orgasm. Moreover, children are often lied to out of a motive of protection. They're often told that they have been through a surgery for cancer or a tumor or something like that. They're lied to about what the surgery was, which is done under the guise of a protection of the child. But what actually happens is this causes a great deal of psychological turmoil in their teens and later life. Also, these surgeries have a high failure rate. They often don't work. And as Cheryl Chase, who was a, a patient who was lied to about her genital surgery as an infant and is now a spokesperson for intersex children and persons, she argues that intersex children should be allowed to wait until they're older to choose their own social sex. And so Fausto Sterling, along with Chase, argues that there should be a right to refuse surgeries. In the past, and still today, 
doctors have done these surgeries without consent even from the parents. Uh, so Fausto Sterling is arguing also for a right to refuse. Doctors have, have done these surgeries either while lying to the parents or just gone ahead and done them without the consent and told them after. Growing up with visibly anomalous genitalia, intersexual individuals often develop into healthy functioning adults who have satisfying sex lives. And so there should be an option to refuse the infant genital surgery. One, because it's harmful, it's abusive, it's traumatic, and two, because having anomalous genitalia does not mean that one is going to grow up to have a uh, psychologically difficult life. In fact, people who are given the right to refuse and grow up with their own body to often develop into healthy functioning adults, whereas having surgery often leads to the opposite. If you watch the film XXY, you should be identifying with this in Alex's experience. Fausto Sterling also argues that we need to develop knowledge about the body that undermines medical surveillance. So concerns of intersexual bodies should be focused on tumor growth, adrenal malfunction, and other issues that could be physically problematic for these children. The medical concern should not be with matching our bodies with a social gender category. These kinds of cosmetic concerns, um, again, cause more harm than they do good. So Fausto Sterling asks us to consider why we see intersex genitals as deformed rather than intact. Is there some version of what genitals should look like? In fact, we all have very different genitals. So we, we have this idea socially of what genitals should look like, right? The social genitals. Uh, we have this conception of what, a, what male genitals look like, what female genitalia looks like. But in fact, none of us look the same. So Fausto Sterling is trying to challenge this view that there's some normal way that genitals should be. And so why is it the case that if someone's naturally born with genitals that are a certain way, a clitoris, for example, that is a bit longer than average, why do we see that as deformity rather than just nature? We ought to have the right to refuse surgeries. Interestingly, Fausto Sterling points out the fact that medical and social progress for transsexuals, uh, gender reassignment surgery for transsexual persons, adults, reinforces the two-sex system where there are two body types to match the two gender types. Some trans persons and groups have begun to support a kind of transgenderism, which allows for a more open, ambiguous, self-defining definition of sex and gender. Judith Halberstam makes this kind of argument about the trans spectrum. There is no sort of two separate poles of masculine and feminine that people have to fall into. Moreover, one's bi biological sex doesn't necessarily align with some, some discrete point on the, the gender spectrum, right? So there ought to be kind of an open, an open sort of field of transgenderism that's not from one pole to the other but rather that's a multiplicity of, of genders. Fausto Sterling argues that we should focus on the variability of gender and the cre creativity, self-creative notions of gender. We ought to be able to create our own conceptions of our gender rather than trying to be fit into a, a box on one or the other side of a, of a spectrum or a dichotomy. And so we should focus on our own personalities and our creative processes rather than conforming to a preset binary gender system. In fact, some cultures do have more than two genders, so it, it's not clear that the binary gender system is some kind of natural system as many people believe. Uh, it's not the case that people are just born either male or female and that that's a biological fact. As Fausto Sterling's account illustrates, if you get nothing else from this, you should get that the fact is, is that people are not born only as male or female. Those categories are socially constructed. We've created these two categories. We've said, okay, all bodies have to fit into one or the other, either male or female. Uh, but the fact is, is that bodies come in a, a, a great diversity of shapes and sizes and 
and types. Our bodies just are variable. They're not one or the other kind. So as Fausto Sterling argues, we should move to a multiple sex and gender role system. It shouldn't be binary. We shouldn't have a gender system that maps onto a two sex system because that's just not the kind of bodies that we have. And furthermore, it causes psychological trauma, it causes physical abuse in the medicalization and normalization of bodies. Not only on intersex infants, but on intersex adults, transsexual and transgender individuals. So although the state is interested in maintaining this two-sex, two-gender system because of the structure of marriage, the family structure, and sexual practices in our society, these laws that regulate and police these practices have religious origins. So they're politically biased in particular ways. I mentioned the Gail Rubin reading when we, when we looked at Butler. Butler discusses Gail Rubin and the anthropological notion of the way in which historical kinship structures put in place a kind of focus on society being structured through the institution of heterosexuality that affects not only marriage, who we marry, who we love, how our families are structured, who we live with, what kind of uh, housing we have, uh, what our sexual practices are, but they also affect things like our gender, even our biological sex. As you can see through Fausto Sterling's account, they undermine our own capability to be creative and personally personally exercise our own agency in determining our, our biological sex and our gender. The, the fact is, within the transgender community, there are many, many gender variations, and that should not be seen as transgressive in a negative way, but transgressive in a positive way. That is, um, it should be seen as a way of exercising agency and autonomy and self-creativity, because it's just a fact that we do have variable, very different bodies and very different uh, social genders as well. So. Transgender rights activists have written a transgender bill of rights calling for legal and social protections from discrimination and violence. And today, the legal and medical status of intersex individuals remains uncertain. <clears throat> These surgeries are still happening, uh, though possibly at a slightly reduced rate. These kinds of things are still happening in the medical arena. Whereas de Beauvoir argued that biological sex is essential, and gender is a social construction, on Fausto Sterling's view, not only is gender a social construction, but biological sex is itself a constructed category. So Fausto Sterling is rejecting the claim that every person is a male or female, and that every person in fact wants to be a male or female. And this is just not true. There are many people who would prefer not to be put into one or other of those categories, male or female, masculine or feminine. Unfortunately, ideas have power, and generalizations like this can harm people. And we see this quite literally in the cases of infant genital surgery. People will alter their bodies in ways that can be harmful to fit social frameworks and expectations. So, Pastor Sterling thinks that we're getting better on talking about gender, but nobody's talking about biological sex, about bodies themselves. One question that Fausto Sterling wants to leave us with, and this might be interesting to talk about on the discussion boards, how much of our identity depends upon the two-sex system? So think about that for yourself. How much of my identity depends upon the two-sex system? Remember that Fausto Sterling and others, myself included, would argue that it's not just about biological sex or even biological sex and gender. It's about the way our entire lives are structured in the sense that um, our lives are structured by the two-sex system because it's maintained by the institution of heterosexuality. It's maintained by the way in which we structure families, the way in which we structure things like our, our work week, uh, the thing, our, our consumerism. And so the way that we spend our, our time, the things that we want, things that motivate us and the persons we're attracted to as well as the, the kinds of persons we want to be are all shaped to, at least to some degree by this constructed idea of there being a binary 
sex system.